Today I'm going to be discussing DeMar Hamlin, a 24-year-old healthy football player who suffered a cardiac arrest after what seemed to be a normal tackle play. Football players wear a lot of protective gear. Aside from the helmet, there's shoulder pads and a chest plate, which has a softer understructure but a hard outer shell. It's designed to reduce blunt force trauma. However, in this instance, if we look at the play, both men were running, and then Hamlin was hit square in the chest by the shoulder of another player. They both fall down. Mr. Hamlin stands up, seems to be well, adjusts his face plate and helmet, and then collapses backwards in a full cardiac arrest. Hi, I'm Dr. Messina, and this might seem a little unusual for a channel dedicated to aesthetic medicine, lasers, and rejuvenation. However, I am a physician, and I have fellowship training in critical care medicine. When someone gets blunt force trauma to the chest, several things could occur. You could get bruising to the heart and lungs. You could get shearing of the delicate arteries coming off of the heart. You can get a pneumothorax, where we collapse the lungs, and then you can't have any type of gas exchange. Or you could have a dysrhythmia, and in this case, I think dysrhythmia is going to be the culprit. When you suffer blunt force trauma to the chest, there's a potential that you bruise your heart. That bruising of the heart can make it significantly less efficient. It could also cause bleeding under the membranes of the heart, called a hemopericardium. And that will affect the ability of the heart to refill. It'll squeeze, expel some blood, and then it can't refill. It doesn't have the space to refill. That's a potential. And that will cut off blood flow to the brain. And when a person stands up and then suddenly collapses and goes unconscious, it's usually because the brain is getting a low blood flow and losing its oxygen. And the brain has no capacity to carry oxygen. Therefore, once the blood flow is sharply reduced, or worse, cut off, you lose consciousness and you start to damage brain cells almost instantly. There's also the potential to shear the major arteries coming out of the heart. That's called a deceleration injury. We see it in people who jump off bridges. They suddenly hit the water and they go from whatever speed they were going to, to zero in a fraction of a second. It also happens with race car drivers who suddenly hit a wall at 200 miles an hour and their body looks perfect, yet their heart and their arterial system is going 200 miles an hour, then all of a sudden it's going zero. It twists and shears and any ripping of the aorta will have a catastrophic fatal result if not treated immediately. I don't think this is the case for Mr. Hamlin. The reason why is we would have heard that he had to have some thoracic surgery. They haven't mentioned anything about that at the time that I filmed this. Next, we could have puncturing of the lungs or pneumothoraxes. If you damage the membranes around the lung, it changes the air exchange because it changes the pressure between the outer side of the lung and inside. When the lungs collapse, you can't get any gas exchange. That's a potential, but he would have had to break multiple ribs on both sides of his chest, and those ribs would have to go in and actually puncture inwards. And then finally, the malignant arrhythmia. This is what I think happened. The heart is a delicate network of nerves and muscles that work in a very coordinated fashion so that the atria at the top of the heart squeeze, then relax, and the ventricles then squeeze and relax, pumping the blood in a forward flow action. We capture this electricity on our routine EKGs where we see this healthy waveform. If this pattern of electrical activity is disrupted, we could get arrhythmias. We all know atrial fibrillation, and we know premature ventricular contractions. 
And from the movies, we know ventricular tachycardia. That is what I think the culprit was. When you go into ventricular tachycardia, the cardiac output decreases sharply. The heart becomes extremely inefficient. Most of the time you lose perfusion to your brain and you lose consciousness. It has to be treated right away with an external defibrillator known as an AED. And CPR should be instituted until that occurs because most of the time ventricular tachycardia is pulseless. Once he gets to the hospital, they go into rule out some of these other incidents that I told you about. We would know if he has a pneumothorax, if there was any blood around the pericardium of the heart, and they would drain that. If he had any cardiac contusions, which would be evidenced by certain blood tests, he would be intubated and placed on a ventilator. All efforts would be made to reduce the demands on his brain and keep it a rest. They might induce a medical coma they will increase his respiratory rate to lower his CO2, which will lower the blood flow to the brain to a degree, but it will also allow the brain to rest a little bit. And they would give other agents to also allow the brain to rest. And they might keep him in this medical-induced coma for several days. Hopefully, the initial brain trauma could resolve. Unfortunately, many times when someone undergoes a cardiac arrest, there is some form of brain damage. Time will tell. In the meantime, we should just keep him in our prayers and hope for a full recovery.